Welcome back to Ozarks Tonight. Good to have you along. I'm David Oliver. Recently, Governor Mike Parson talked about in his State of the State address uh, a big emphasis on workforce development. That's a big priority for him in this legislative session. And of course, a local school in Springfield is at the uh, front and center of that workforce development. Of course, we're talking about OTC. We wanted to bring in OTC President Dr. Hal Higdon for Ozarks Tonight to talk about some new things that are happening at the school. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in, Thank Dr. You. Higdon. Um, first of all, before we get to what the governor talked about uh, last week, let's talk about what you guys have going on because you got a, a tax levy increase passed by voters last year. It equates to about $10 a year for the average homeowner, $3.3 million a year for you all extra over 20 years. What are you going to do with that money? Well, we have several projects that we promised the community we would do. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one was to build a new uh, agriculture center at our Richwood Valley campus in Christian County. That's actually, uh, the concrete was poured last week. It'll open this fall. Okay. Our second one was to build a new center in the Republic. We have land donated by the Cox family. And so we'll build a new uh, $7.2 million center in Republic to serve that part of our county plus the surrounding counties. And the third and largest is to build a center for advanced manufacturing here in Springfield on our main campus, which would be the first in Missouri. And you said that the governor's actually included some money in his budget for that project? Correct. Uh, they had a, a, a opportunity to submit for these projects. Uh, the Hawthorne Foundation, the Department of Economic Development, and the Department of Higher Education came in and ranked them one mm -hmm. through 50. We were ranked the number one project in the state. Okay. And so we uh, submitted for $5 million and we were ranked number one. So that was going to the legislature for their consideration. So it's always good to be number one. So the governor, like I said, talked about workforce development being one of his top priorities in this legislative session and, and moving forward. Obviously, that's what you guys are in the, in the game to do. You're, right. you're, you're helping develop the workforce. How do you expect you got, for OTC and, and the governor's office and, and lawmakers to kind of work together in tandem on that? Well, the good thing is the legislature is in step with the governor, uh, both Republican and Democrat. Mm -hmm about the, the whole need for infrastructure and workforce. And on the workforce side, uh, if you look at his budget, there's $10 million additional for workforce training, short-term training, which is something we do. Mm -hmm. There's a $22 million fast-track scholarship program for adults 25 and over without a degree, which is a tremendous idea. It's very similar to what they're doing in Tennessee. Uh, he includes additional money for A+, which is for helps us. And then um, there's a restructuring of the Department of Economic Development to make it more efficient. So um, there were a lot of good things in his uh, State of the State address. Why do you think OTC has seen such uh, tremendous growth in recent years? Well, a lot of the reason is, you know, Springfield in 1990 was the largest metropolitan area in this country without a community college. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of pent-up demand. Additionally, uh, Springfield has a super diversified economy. We have health care, we have education, we have federal jobs, but we have a large manufacturing. And because of that, uh, the three prongs of our school, Allied Health, which serves our medical community, community, our technical, which serves our business and industry, and then our general education. And then the th other reason is we're the only part of the state that's growing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a migration out from Kansas City and St. Louis. There's a migration into the Springfield area. Mm -hmm. So we really have a rising tide of more people, plus we have high demand um, programs that mean that people come to see us. I know we've done some reporting here on, at Color 10 in years past about the fact that there are jobs out there, but there aren't necessarily the, the people with the skills to fill those jobs, and that's kind of where you all step in to try to get those people those skills. Diesel mechanics is a great example of that. Uh, we're a transportation hub. Every diesel mechanic we can turn out is hired, usually before they graduate. Mm -hmm. So we were able to get a federal grant last year, and we just finished the new edition. We, we tripled the size of our diesel mechanic uh, space and doubled the number of students just to try to keep up with demand. Uh, Prime obviously is gigantic plus all the other uh, trucking companies and we're turning out as many as we can but it's still not enough. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, in terms of uh, what the governor is wanting to do with workforce development and what you all are wanting to do in, 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 this, in the context of, of state funding. Right. Um, you know, we had Cliff Smart from Missouri State here on the show uh, recently, and he talked about Missouri State being the lowest funded four-year school mm -hmm. in the state. You all are the lowest community college funded right. school in the state. Right. Do you have some legislative priorities in terms of trying to get that increased or where are you going to go? We do and fortunately the community colleges uh, six years ago 
and this is an interesting fact, was Governor Parson was a senator then. Mm -hmm. He actually called in the folks from St. Louis and Kansas City and said, you know, you got to start sharing. Mm -hmm. So we have an internal program within the community colleges where the, the two large schools, um, St. Louis and Kansas City, give up 5% of their revenue each year from the state to redistribute because we're, a th we're getting a third to a quarter as much as they are. Mm -hmm. So even in a year without legislative intent, we get a little bit of help. The four years don't have that. But we're hoping, um, in fact, the Coordinating Board for Higher Education recommended this year that there be a 1% pool for all higher ed. Mm -hmm. If that happens, the two schools that will benefit the most will be Springfield. You know, if you ask why OTC and Missouri State are the lowest funded, it's because we've grown the most mm -hmm. over the last 25 years. Has that been tough, I would imagine, to try to keep your balance, your budget balanced uh, when you receive that, that lesser amount of funding from the state, but you're still seeing the growth in terms of students and trying to balance it all out, I would imagine that's got to be tough. It is tough. Only 13% of our budget comes from the state. Okay. Ideally, that should be a third. Mm -hmm. So, But what it means is we operate with less square footage per student than any other school. We also spend less on administration than the other schools. So what we've done is just never been allowed ourselves not to be efficient. Mm -hmm. it, it's a double-edged sword. It kind of keeps you really lean and mean. I, I look back on some of our reporting from election night, uh, just this last go-around when you got the tax levy increase yeah. passed, and you, we had a sound bite with you, and one of the things you said was over the last 20 years, you all outperformed. We did. And you said you're going to do it again. Kind of explain what that means. Well, 20 years ago, uh, Dr. Norman Myers, who was president then, and the board promised to build a, 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 our ITT center. And, and, and a lot of technical and allied health programs, and within five years they had fulfilled every promise. Mm -hmm. And then over the next 15, we overperformed. Well, we made these promises about these new s programs and centers. Within five years, we will have fulfilled every pro promise we made mm -hmm. for 20, and then we'll have 15 more years to overperform. Okay. And then the next lady or man who sits in my chair can ask for that nickel again. Okay. And, and the public, you know, when you win with 58% of the vote in Southwest Missouri on a tax yeah. levy increase, you're doing something right. Yeah, obviously, that, yeah. that does say a lot. How long have you been here now? I forget. Twelve and a half years. I remember the day you started. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've been here that long, too. So, yeah. Dr. Hal Hegden, the president of OTC in Springfield, thank you so much. Good thank to you. see you. Keep us posted on the progress and all the projects and the good things happening over there. Thanks for having me. We'll have more Ozarks tonight right after this quick break.